So it's great to see you this morning, and um, here we are to worship, worship our God. Uh, so many times, you know, uh, we don't have time to do so many things because we are engaged in so many activities. But one of the things we cannot take for granted is to worship God. And sometimes we do. We do take things for granted. And I am, I am guilty of taking things and people for granted. And today we will learn more, more about it uh, as we uh, um, worship. And uh, I invite you now to uh, bow our heads in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to worship together, to gather through different uh, places, uh, through this media technology, to, to be able to see each other, but also to, to uh, pray together and to uh, hear your word being spoken and preached. Be with us, O oh Lord, as we bring the whole of ourselves, that we can be present in this moment for these uh, minutes and that we could learn uh, how to be, uh, to listen to your voice, but also receive your grace, your mercy, and your guidance for our lives. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you give us and even the technology that allows us to connect together as you're the body of Christ. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue our worship, I would like to invite you to share uh, your joys and concerns that you bring this morning for us to pray together. Any joys and concerns? Uh, Sandy. I, I was just talking even before we started. I think it's the weekend for a lot of parties around. And I went to two yesterday. Just visiting with friends was a joy people we haven't seen forever and ever and um it was they were both outside parties survived the rain and but it was a good it was a good day yes amen yes lots of things going on uh, around us anybody else jenny go ahead Hi, everybody. I guess I just would ask for prayers. I'm traveling back to Chicago on Tuesday, so just prayers for safe travel. Where are you now? I'm still in South Carolina. Okay. Safe travels, yes. Thank you. And I don't see any other hands. 
Well, prayers for, for our church family. Um, there is a lady by the name of Sarah um, Jerome. She, she is a member of Decatur Grace United Methodist Church. But she's been visiting with us because she is now with, with us. Uh, but she's been in a nursing home and she's 80, 87 years old. And she had a massive stroke last week. And they're waiting to see how she will react. So prayers for, for her. Um, and um, uh, prayers also for Faith, who had uh, knee surgery, for Dave, who had knee surgery, and they are recovering from it. And hopefully they will uh, be uh, responding to the uh, rehab very well. Uh, it seems that they are, but, you know, things move slowly with knee surgery. So prayers for you guys. And Janice, uh, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Thank the Lord for being here. Um, just want to let you guys know that George's wife passed, Gilbert's brother. Oh, my God. Um, yes. Um, Judy passed, um, I think it was last Tuesday. And the services will be um, this coming Friday. So keep George Owens in your prayers, please. Thank you. Yes. Sorry to hear about that. All right. I invite you to bow our heads in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for, for this beautiful day, for how things are changing in our midst and how we are reopening to new encounters, to parties, to celebrations. But in the midst of it all, we still continue with this pandemic and the suffering that it has caused. We continue with... Uh, uh, needs uh, that need to be met, especially in the healthcare system. We know that many people have suffered and have got sick, sicker because they have not been able to visit doctors. But we thank you for those who have been able to have surgery and they are recovering, recovering from it. Those who have been through chemo and radiation and have uh, ended those treatments and now are waiting for results. Um, we thank you, Lord, for, for those who now are in your presence. Thank you for, we are sad for their departure, but we are rejoicing that now they are in your presence where there is no more tears or pain or suffering. And we thank you for the uh, privilege of knowing them, of their presence uh, influencing our lives or touching us. We thank you, Lord, for everything that uh, is uh, bringing us together at this time in, in a society that tends to be apart, that is divided by ideologies or politics and so many other things. Bring us together as the people of God to love justice, to love mercy, and, and to do your will wherever we are. Lord, we ask for traveling mercies for everyone who is going places and for those who are returning home, that they will be safe along the road and that people will respect each other, especially when we see so much violence in the roads and uh, road rage. Lord, we ask that you uh, be with us during this week and that you will help us not to take things for granted, but to live each day, one at a time, to the fullest. Um, give us your grace and mercy and protection. And Lord, we pray to you the prayer that you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I invite you now to join me in the offertory prayer. Uh, we have been really blessed to, to have all of you support us with your presence, your gifts, your talents to continue to do God's uh, work in our midst. And uh, we never forget that. We can't take that for granted. So thank you so much for everything you do uh, for God's cause, for God's kingdom. So I invite you now to join me in the prayer that is on your screens. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to give to you all that we have and all that we are that we may praise you not with our words only, but with our whole lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading for this morning is from the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, chapter 11, verses 7 through 9, and I am reading from the message. <clears throat> Oh, how sweet the light of day and how wonderful to live in the sunshine. Even if you live a long time, don't take a single day for granted. Take delight in each light-filled hour, remembering that there will also be many dark days and that most of what comes your way is smoke. You who are young, make the most of your youth. Relish your youthful vigor. Follow the impulses of your heart. You who are young, make the most of your youth. Relish your youthful vigor. Follow the impulses of your heart. If something looks good to you, pursue it. But know also that not just anything goes. You have to answer to God for every last bit of it. This is the word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Um, certainly, <clears throat> I'm not taking technology for granted today as my computer continues to act, tap, disconnects me, connects me, write words and all that stuff. I will figure it out later. <laughs> but uh, yes, I don't take it for granted today. And, and oh gosh. Usually the, um, you know, the epiphany of having taken something for granted comes after it's already gone. Whether that's something or someone, you know, I know I am guilty of taking things for granted. But what is to take for granted? Well, um, to assume you will never uh, lose something, uh, that is to take for granted. Uh, also to... Um, give little attention to the value of something, to underestimate the worth of something, and finally to fail to <clears throat> appreciate the value of uh, importance of of something. Um, uh, and so the trouble is, you know, the trouble with the, the why we take things for granted is we think we've got time, you know. I think that tomorrow will always be there. You know, I will always have food, shelter, clothing, job, good health, my gifts, my freedom. Uh, I will have my family, my friends, my pet. If there is anything we have learned during this time, it's been the fact that this during this pandemic is we cannot take things for granted because, hey, all of a sudden we found ourselves that when we thought that the stores were going to have everything we needed, we did not have them supply everything we needed. You know, we took for granted toilet paper and sanitizers, hand, you know, the wipes and all that stuff, even food that we took for granted was going to be there, wasn't there. And the most tragic part of it is that for so many people that, you know, took for granted that things, eh, God is going to protect us, God is going to take care of us, it didn't happen the way they expected. Many contracted the virus and died. <clears throat> and some of them died alone without anybody you know holding their hands and we've taken that so much for granted 
the thing is we easily fall into the habit of expecting our blessings will be, you know, kind of repeated on a schedule, taking for granted that which we have been accustomed. We even take God's love and mercy and purpose for granted. And remember the people of Israel, uh, the Hebrew people took God for granted. I mean, it, on foot, it doesn't take 40 years to go from Egypt to Israel. But the people of Israel wandered in the wilderness for four decades, for 40 years, because they neglected the practice of keeping faith with God. They, they <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> certainly they took God for granted. Moses stroked the rock instead of speaking to it. He lost, and then he lost his privilege of going into the promised land. He took God for granted. Remember the story of the rich farmer who wanted to build bigger barns to store his grains and goods? You know, that story teaches us that he took God's blessings for granted. If you read Luke 12, you will find that story there. And he could not finish uh, his project, you know, because uh, in the story we learn that he is about to die. <clears throat> In our passage for today encourages us not to take not to take a single day for granted. It encourages us to live in the present. Um, the psalmist even reminds us in Psalm uh, uh, 118, verse 24, "This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it." <clears throat> however, however, you know, we think that we can, uh, that the tomorrow is always going to be there. It's going to be more days, more weeks, more months, even more years. And I have to make a confession uh, before you. I am guilty of taking things for granted. Sometimes I've taken people for granted. I've taken things for granted many times. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, just as as a father, I have taken my daughter for, for granted. I have taken her love and loyalty to me or her supportive care for granted. As a husband also, I have taken for granted the love of my wife, you know, and the fact that she decided to be with me uh, uh, for the rest of my life. As, you know, I have taken you sometimes for granted, the church for granted, that you're always going to be there to help, to support, <clears throat> you know, to carry the weight of so many things. And even I have taken <clears throat> God for granted. I have taken Jesus for granted, you know. And, and, and I have done that because, oh, you know, I quote Jesus' instruction to his disciples. Well, you know, Jesus is going to forgive me 490 times. And Jesus has endless mercy. And so at the back of my mind, you know, uh, I excuse my behavior and proceed with my sin, thinking, well, I'll, rep I'll repent sincerely later and, I'll, and it'll be okay. You know? But what if I don't have time? You know, what if tomorrow is not going to be there for me? You know, what if later doesn't come? I mean, we know things can go wrong at any time. We never know what's around the corner. We can affect it by uh, illness. I mean, our lives can be interrupted all of a sudden. The, the, the same way our lives were interrupted, you know, uh, during this pandemic. And everything changed. You never know what's around the corner. And, and James uh, 4, 14 uh, we we read, uh, what do you know about tomorrow? How can you be so sure about life? It is nothing more than mist that appears for only a little while before it disappears. And that tells me that life is very transient and uncertain. And we know that. Solomon, Solomon in, the, in the Proverbs also um, wrote, uh, don't brag about tomorrow. 
because each day brings its surprises. Proverbs 27, 1. Uh, folks, uh, in all honesty, you know, I, I tend to forget the things like my life, my relationship with God, the open access I have to God. Um, and, you know, and I think that my salvation, the mercy I receive from God are privileges. But in reality, uh, I don't deserve them, you know. In reality, they, they, are, not, they are not mine. And uh, God has given them to me out of, out of grace. But like I do with, you know, uh, with so many uh, gifts that I receive, um, I just, you know, uh, take, the, take them for granted, knowing that, you know, they are not mine, that God has given them to me out of grace. Uh, and, and I think that I want to keep them forever, no matter what I do. And I forget that the things that I have are a privilege. And especially God's grace for me comes at a cost. You know, it's not cheap. It cost Jesus his life and God his son. I fail to treasure these things and make the most out of them. And unfortunately, what, unfortunately, we often learn when we lose things. You know, it often takes a painful loss for people to realize that it is possible to lose things of great value to them. And so we should learn from Jesus. We should learn from Jesus not to take life for granted. Jesus does, does not assume at any moment that, that we, you know, that we love him. But Jesus asks us. Jesus does not assume that we want or understand how to follow him. He spells out clearly how we can follow him. And Jesus gives us the strength and guidance of how to be a good disciple. He promises to be with us always to the end of age. So we are encouraged to be like Jesus and take nothing for granted. Because he does not take us for granted. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus does not take you for granted. You and I, he gives us opportunities, chances each and every day a second chance, a third or more chances. He gives us choices because he loves us with an everlasting love. Now, don't take your life for granted because you need Jesus. You need his guidance and fellowship and strength to be faithful. And don't take Jesus for granted. Look for him. Notice that he is in your midst. And finally, don't take... Don't take life for granted. Don't take life for granted. God blesses us with abundant hope and wonder. And I would suggest that you realize life while you are living it. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it should teach us that each day is precious. That each day is a gift. And we cannot take it for granted. That we have to live it to the fullest. By God's grace. Amen.
as we go now to, to live our lives, uh, take one day at a time, enjoy it, savor it. Um, do the things that are most important, the priorities that matter most for you. Take care of yourselves, take care of those around you, but also uh, live uh, with vigor. Live as if they was the last day of your Did you hear anything that I said? <laughs> okay. It's like my something muted my I it just muted me. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. As we go our separate ways now, I invite you to not to take uh, life for granted, to live it to the fullest because we don't know what's around the corner. And uh, I receive now the blessing that comes from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs>